All right, so on today's video, we're going to try to uh, upgrade the uh, steering on this old boat from uh, manual cable steering to uh, hydraulic steering system. We ordered this system here off of Vivor. It is a uh, no Noel, Noel. Not really sure how you pronounce that. But uh, what reviews I can find are pretty good. Uh, it's about half the price of uh, a Bay Star kit, which is what we would need. We're 90 horsepower, so this kit here is for 150 horsepower or less. Uh, same with the Bay Star. Sea Star is the one that is uh, for the bigger outboards. But this has got really good reviews. A lot of people say that it mimics the Bay Star pretty much um, entirely for the most part. So that's what we're going to go with. Um, this old cable steering on this boat, man, it's rough. It's a uh, super hard to turn. It got a ton of slack. Sometimes it completely freezes up. Uh, you can put all the grease you want to in this thing, clean it, whatever. It just you may help it for a couple hours and then drop back to being tough again. It almost it almost feels sometimes like something's going to break and it's kind of scary. So I'm going to make an attempt to do this yourself. Um, now, one thing I will say about this video is that if you're looking for someone to help you learn how to fish cables through your boat, this is probably not going to be the video for you. Uh, the reason for that is, is this boat's not factory. The previous owner, as you can see, replaced, took all the wood out of the boat, which is great, replaced it with aluminum. It's all aluminum. Also extended this deck. So from the factory, the deck, the back deck on this boat would probably come to about right here, roughly. Uh, he extended it way out and made it a lot bigger, which is also nice. And it's all uh, pop riveted down with uh, aluminum rivets. And then the side, the gunnel wall here, I don't know what you exactly call it, but that's all aluminum too. And uh, we've tried multiple times upgrading stuff and running cables, not having any luck. You can see this old transducer. I've had it laying down in the splash well forever, but we can never seem to get anything to pull completely out. So having said that, I'm going to remove the, I'm going to drill these rivets out of this piece and we'll remove it. Um, that will get me back to somewhere right along in here where I'm going to imagine the, obviously all the cables and lines turn and run that way. Worst case scenario, I may have to pull this entire back deck up, but we also have some other wires and stuff to straighten up. So I'd rather just pull all this up clean everything in the boat up and get it all running the right way so i'm going to film all this i don't know how much i'll of it i'll show just because it's probably not going to do you guys much good but like i said if you're looking for a video to teach you how to fish cables throughout your boat this is not the one for you if you are looking for one that may help you uh install hydraulic steering put all the fittings together install the helm and all that stuff then uh, this might help but I'm going to get started. Like I said, I'm going to start. Um, I'm going to start by taking this piece here off, exposing all these cables and everything, and just see exactly what I'm looking at as far as trying to get to this stuff. Now, before we do anything else, let's see what's in this box. Installation manual. Template for the helm. There's the helm. Hydraulic pump, whatever you want to call it. Super, super heavy. I'm not an expert on these things, but I can tell you that there's some definitely some mass to that baby. I'm going to imagine that's a bracket for the helm. 
Looks like a all your fittings, mounting hardware for the helm or the pump, whatever you want to call it. Looks like we've got two connections from the hose to the pump, two connections from the hoses to the uh, to the shaft, to the steering shaft. Here's the filler hose and the bleeder hose. So there's the steering assembly that actually attaches to the outboard itself. Again, feels feels well made. Looks sturdy and heavy. All right. Got two hoses, 20 feet long. Uh, the ends here that's already have the fittings on them. Those will be the, the ends that go uh, to the pump, to the helm. And then this end you'll cut to uh, whatever length you need once you get them ran back. Now one thing I've read and heard many people say, if you don't do anything else, make sure you keep these covers on the hoses until the very last minute. Two reasons. One of them is uh, to keep the colors matched from your helm back to your outboard is very important or you can get them crossed and your steering will be backwards. Secondly, where this is a hydraulic system, you don't want any foreign material getting inside this hose because any little bit of uh, material could clog up your pump, cause a failure and that wouldn't be good. So you wanna leave all this stuff, leave these plugs in until you actually need to make the connection. All right, so those actually come out a little easier than I expected. Um, it seems like there's a fastener somewhere under that console. Before I go through the trouble of taking that console loose, I'm gonna see if this is enough to allow me to get this, uh, get this steering cable out and get the other hoses in. Um, I don't think it'll be too hard up here. And then if you look right down in here, I don't know how good you can see. You can see the cable. Right there, it shoots directly, does a straight 90 over and then comes out where it normally would. So hopefully this gives me enough leverage to get in here and, and pull this out. All right, so before I get to doing any more potentially unnecessary disassembly to the boat, I'm gonna go ahead and see what I've got to do to get my Hey, I'm ready here. So on my boat, we're just going to pop this little decorative cover off. So I guess a three-quarter inch, at least for my boat anyway. Well, that was easy enough. So far, so good. Probably going to replace the steering wheel. Not today, but soon. Washer in there looks like. There we go.
a little lubrication and some brute force. Looks like we pulled it right off of there. So we got the old steering helm out and it calls for a 3.03 inch hole, I believe. Let's see the 150. Yeah, 3.03 inch hole. And then of course you have to drill four holes for your bolts. But it's looking like this is going to be fairly close. So I may not have to resaw this. I may just have to uh, just file it out a little bit. But before I do anything else here, I want to see how much luck I'm going to have getting this uh, manual steering cable out. All right, I don't know how good you guys can see this, but. I need to remove this bolt off the little steering arm here in the center. And then we're going to take this nut off the other end of the steering arm. There's the steering arm removed. Now we'll remove the uh, steering cable nut. I don't have a wrench big enough to fit it, so I'm using the adjustable. All right, this is the part that I really need to work good for my sanity. 
but remember you got the two ends that have the fittings already on them those go to your steering helm the other two go to the motor so what I'm going to attempt to do now my string that I pulled through with the O-cable I'm going to take this I'm going to tie off to these tape it up real good and hopefully I can pull these through without having to take anything else apart that went fairly smooth so now I got the uh, hydraulic lines back to the motor well eventually once we get get it fed back up and through the steering helm we'll probably end up cutting quite a bit off on that end obviously you don't want to cut off on that end but uh, the first thing we want to do is get this end connected before we do any cutting or anything but first I'm going to go back and put the uh, steering control arm on on the motor. All right, I got my drive cylinder here, steering cylinder. I took uh, both of the uh, angle the angled arms off. That's a five eighths wrench. Took both those off, and also removed this uh, bolt and nut. It's a nine sixteenths. So now I'm going to take the uh, cylinder over and mounted onto the outboard onto the uh, that center bracket there where the uh, original steering was mounted All right, so I got the uh, cylinder mounted and it was a little bit more difficult than it should be, mainly because that bolt threads into the tiller handle on the outboard and the bolt is just short enough to fit in there. So you kind of have to feel around and get it started, screw it all the way down. Then you got to put a uh, flat washer and a nylon lock nut on the bottom but I got it in now I'm going to install reinstall the uh, the two angle control arms on either side of the cylinder All right, I think since this hole here is going to be almost big enough the way it is, I'm going to go ahead and drill my four small holes. Use this flashlight to line my... See, it's going to be pretty close. It'll be a little bit small maybe, but... started and then I'll
the kit comes with two of these. You got a uh, smaller diameter coarser thread with an o-ring on one end, finer thread on the other. I said you got two of them. And then on your helm, of course, your uh, fill hole goes up. But also, if you look real close, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but you got a starboard and a port. Ports. These two on top and bottom we're not going to use. Those are for some kind of autopilot or something that we don't have. So, <clears throat> so starboard, if you're sitting in the boat looking ahead, starboard's your right side, port's your left side. Um, I try to remember it. Starboard steering, port passenger. If you got a center console, I guess that wouldn't work, but whatever. So we'll take a four millimeter Allen wrench, remove one of these plugs. So we're using adjustable. All right. Now we're going to do the same thing on this side. Take out this plug. And again, do not use any Teflon tape on any of these fittings because you don't want that tape. Pieces of that tape to get loose in your hydraulic system and plug up your uh, pump. Okay, so it just dawned on me that I'm not going to be able to connect my hoses to my helm yet because this plate's got to go on the back. And I have to, obviously the hoses have to run through that. So I'm going to have to put the helm in first, which I've already got my fittings installed. And I've got four little flat washers that'll go first on each stud. Got these long brass nuts, which are 10 millimeter. They'll go on next. And then got the little small Teflon lock nut that'll go on last, and that's 7 16 standard metric mix. I don't get that part, but whatever it takes. So then I'm going to put my helm in. Go in the back, put this on. Put all my hardware on. Then we'll install the hoses. Alright, so my boat has a piece of wood in the back to as an extra support probably about three quarters inch thick. So I did not need these longer nuts. I just put the plate on, uh, the flat washer and the locking nut is all I needed. So just know that you may or may not need these on your install. So now I'm gonna go back under and attach my cables. And I'm going to put blue on the starboard, which is on the right, my right, looking forward. And I'm going to put the red on the port. And I labeled these front of the boat, blue, starboard, red port, because in the back of the boat, you got to reverse it. So on the back, red will be starboard and blue will be port. So, get out of there and install those. Alright, so now that we've got our helm plugged.
plumbed up with our uh, tubing. I'm now going to feed all this extra tubing back to the back and spill in the uh, splash well because that's the end that we'll need to cut, obviously, to fit our boat. All right, so we, <clears throat> we got all of our excess tubing back here in the back. <clears throat> Remember, we still have our blue and red plugs in. And to me, I feel like this right here is probably one of the most critical parts to try not to screw up <clears throat> because these set of hoses just to replace these hoses if you're lucky you can find them for a hundred bucks for the set so you obviously don't want to cut these too short so my hoses are coming in from uh, <clears throat> from the starboard side here so the farthest away the cylinder is going to be is if you're turning starboard that way so you're going to want enough hose to see. I need. <clears throat> so you're going to make sure you got enough hose to reach all the way if you're turned all the way starboard. But you also don't want so much that when you turn back this way that you've got too much hose trying to kink up here so one thing I think I am going to do is since there's not a lot of space between the outside of these nipples and the side walls I'm going to make both connections be in the middle so I'm going to take this uh, bleeder off and put it over on this side over here that way I've got one line coming in this way and the other line going in this way. That way I don't have lines being cramped up between here and this wall and here and this wall. And that'll make more sense once I get it done. So now remember, we had blue on the starboard up front. So we'll have blue on port in the back, which is this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my blue line here that I've got way, way too much of and I'm going to go ahead and cut it way extra long and I'm going to put my blue plug back in after I cut it because right now it's going to be hard for me to determine. Well, I guess I probably could. Turn this all the way port, and this is my blue line. So I'm going to cut it pretty long about right here because I can always cut it again. But again, if you cut it too short, you're in trouble. So it's going to connect right there using. A saw for this because you don't want to get a bunch of debris in your hose and that's tough stuff that way I don't get my hoses confused so now if I'm turned all the way this way you see I got some slack there so if you turn all the way this way, it still leaves room for it. It may be a little bit long, but I'm going to leave it like that for now. Because like I said, I can always cut it back off and redo it. I'm going to take, you got two of these fittings. Two 
two of these, red and blue, they're identical. And they're two pieces. So the big end of this piece is supposed to thread counterclockwise directly onto the line. Then you put a little bit of oil on this and thread this inside the line. And then of course this free float, so you gotta have a wrench put on this little collar, one to put on here, and you tighten this down on the line. So let's see how that works out. I don't know if you can see that, but it's threaded all the way on to where the hose butts up to the back of those threads in there. It says to oil these threads a little bit. I don't specify what to use, so I'm going to just use this uh, fire steering fluid that I bought for the system. Open one of them in and just dip it in there a little bit. Should be good. And then that screws right down in there. Alright, got that screwed all the way down, actually wasn't too bad, it was a little tight, but... so now we can pull this little protective boot off our nipple here. Take our blue cap off. That's probably a little bit too much slack. But like I said, I can always cut it down. I'll decide that before I put the, the oil in it, but this is the first time doing this, so I'm just trying to be extra careful. Really no point in putting the red back in that because it's the only one left. The blue one's already hooked up. So this will come in at an angle like that. Should be about right. So we'll reverse thread this on there. Seated down, take a red
of the kit comes with these two hoses. You got one hose here with the little brass fitting and a O-ring. That is going to go in the helm to fill it with fluid. The other one, I'm assuming, is the hook to your bleeders to bleed it off. And it also comes with this little tap that fits your oil bottle. Take the lid off. This is going to go down in the opposite end of this. This will screw into the helm. This will screw onto the bottle. Uh, this kit did not come with steering fluid, so I bought two quarts of this Quicksilver hydraulic cam steering fluid. This plug's not really designed for a wrench. It's plastic. I just used a pair of uh, channel locks just to gently loosen it. We'll screw this down. Snug it down there. All right, so I got the bottle zip tied up. Got the hose on the nipple on that end. Got it going into the helm on that end. And now you've got to puncture a hole in the top of this bottle. So I'm going to take my knife and uh, carefully cut a hole in the bottom of this bottle somewhere so it can get air. That way the fluid can run down and it won't suck this bottle flat. Now I know you couldn't see that. But once the line got full on that side it Turn the motor. So now we're going to go back here and bleed. We turn toward the starboard side, so we're going to bleed the port side uh, bleeder valve back there. All right, since we got clean, a clean system with clean steering fluid, I'm going to save it into this container. That way I can reuse it. If I need if I need all of it to fill the system up. All right, so I went up there and turned the wheel starboard some more. We don't have all the air out yet, but it says to keep going back and forth between sides. So I'm gonna tighten this back up. Take my hose off. Next, we'll turn our wheel port counterclockwise but before I do that I'm gonna cut a hole in this jug big enough to where I can pour the second bottle in this jug that way we keep from getting the air pocket if this runs out
All right, now you can see. We got enough fluid to the back to where the motor turned like you're going to turn port side. So now we'll go back and we'll bleed the other screw the same way we did the, the first one. Right, now we're going to keep repeating these steps until all the bubbles are gone from the uh, bleed line on both sides. All right, so I feel pretty good about it. Real smooth. It felt like somewhere between five and six turns from lock to lock. Uh, I didn't feel any any hesitation in it for air bubbles. The good news is you can always come back and uh, re-bleed. That's the easy part. Uh, all the hard work's over. So now we're gonna put our little sleeves back on our, anything you can do to keep debris out of those. I'll put the other one on in a second. But yeah, um, wasn't the easiest thing I've ever done. And uh, I'm sure there's way more professional jobs uh, that you could find to uh, get a better idea how to do this. But I definitely made a lot of mistakes. Had to go back and redo some stuff. But in the end, I probably saved myself three or 400 bucks. I have a professional put this on for over $100 an hour. So. I'm going to put the boat back together, get everything cleaned up good, and I uh, can't wait to get on the water and try it out. Hope you guys learned something. I know I learned a lot, but we'll see you guys on the next Bluegrass State of Mind video. See you later.